All right. So um, since we we've used the uh, almost half of our time, we decided to switch to, to uh, something uh, ACPI and PM related from from strictly PCI, although the first topic I have is, is PCI as well, so it's not like a lot of change. First of all, I'd like to say, I'd like to say something about what we've done in the PCI, in, in the ACPI area uh, over the last year, and that's mostly uh, things related to device enumeration and hot plug. So um, we added some functionality for uh, enumerating devices that do not, are, actually platform devices, so they are not enumerable natively, and they do, do not fit very well into the, into the uh, PNP device models. So uh, that's the first thing. The, the other is uh, we added, we cleaned up pretty much a lot of support for uh, ACPI hot plug of system devices like CPUs and memory, and we, we've added uh, support for uh, Thunderbolt, which uh, required us to rework the, the ACPI PHP uh, subsystem, which is a PCI based hot plug, uh, PCI, ACPI based hot plug for PCI. Uh, I, I'll talk about that in a while, but the first topic I have for today is about uh, hot, PCI hot plug drivers. Uh, they are PCI HP and PCI PHP, ACPI PHP. Uh, so the PCI HP stands for PCI Express hot plug, and ICPI PHP stands for ICPI PCI hot plug, right? So the uh, so the, the the second one is a bit more generic. It can be used with uh, parallel PCI devices as well as, ex, uh, as PCI Express. Uh, so originally those two things were designed as alternative drivers that that can be used uh, that cannot be could not be used together. So if we load, kind of loaded one of them, the other one was not loaded. And, uh, and it, they both could bind to the same hardware and could register slots and then operate on those slots. The slot is something, it's, it's the same thing that the PCI uh, spec calls a function. So it is a, yeah, a device, right? So there's a device, it, it can have multiple functions and we call the thing slot. And, and what, what the PCI spec calls function, we call it device. So it's kind of confusing, but anyway. Uh, and originally it was designed, they both were designed for leaf devices, which are not bridges, but actually you can hot plug bridges or PCI Express switches. And so it is not really um, adequate. So if ACPI PHP, we can actually, it, it actually handles uh, uh, bridge hot plug right now. PCI HP doesn't, as far as I can say. Um, now, uh, if you think about that, it, they just are different methods of signaling hot plug events. So you can get the, uh, a hot plug event through ACPI. Uh, using the using the GP uh, through 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 the ACI this is, uh, PCI inter ACPI interrupt, so that's that's one way to get uh, hot plug events, and the other way is through uh, root port uh, interrupts, in interrupts that happen on root ports, and that's what uh, PCI EHP uh, is supposed to handle. And what happens is that regardless of of the source of, of, of the event, you should be doing the same thing on hot plug, on hot remove, and on hot add of a device, but that's not what happens. So ICPI PHP does something, and PC, PCI EHP does something different. And then that may cause problems to happen. I actually think that uh, PCI EHP has a bug because it doesn't, because if there is a, if, if the PCI device in, question does have an ACPI object, it should handle that object as well, but it doesn't. So we should, or we may need to just uh, redesign those things so, so that they really do the same operations on hot, on hot remove and on hot add, uh, regardless of the source of the event. 
so we can get the, we can get a root port in, interrupt, uh, which is which has the device has appeared, or we can get a, an HCPI notification which says the same thing, and we should be doing the same. Uh, we, the, they both should lead to the same code path, ideally. It, th that's not happens today, but. Yeah, we have, but, uh, and of course, uh, the power on and power off here are, I mean, uh, actually those things mean uh, that's how that and that's how to remove. And power on and power off are used because we have uh, functions that are called power of slot and power on slot, and that, and they actually do how, how to add and how to remove. Yeah? Actually, no. So uh, there's the whole story behind that. Uh, does the pointer work or not? I don't know. I mean, just laser pointer. Okay. okay. This. Top button. Yeah. Doesn't work. Seems. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks. Uh, so there's a whole story behind that because uh, we really thought that if we could, if we, if the BIOS didn't get us control over uh, the PCI uh, extended capability structure, then we shouldn't use PCIe. But there's nothing preventing us for using, uh, and the other way around, if it gave us control of, over that then we should be using PCI Express native hot plug only. But actually, there's nothing that prevents the BIOS to use ACPI-based signaling as well as PCI Express signaling at the same time. So what happens in practice is we get ACPI notifies, even though the BIOS has given us control over the extended PCI Express uh, capability structure. And you can, no, because you can have Thunderbolt in the same machine. You can have Thunderbolt and you can have PCI Express native uh, hot plug slot at the same time. And then you have to use ACPI and you have to use native signaling. So actually, we need to use this, them both at the same time. So we thought that they were mutually exclusive, but it turns out they aren't, in fact. So yeah, that's the problem, basically. Right. I have a configuration of sort of opposite problem. Mm -hmm. I have a workstation that has an external expansion box that supports a lot of The files in the workstation, those, it doesn't grant control over PCI native hot plugs. But obviously, it doesn't know how to handle hot plugs in the expansion box externally. My only choice is. Yeah, and that's kind of, you know, fishy if you think about extensibility. I mean, you, you may have Thunderbolt and something all, all on top of it, which also might be a removable slot or something like that. And that becomes very complicated. Uh, so we can't really treat those things as mutually exclusive anymore. And we need to do something to just integrate them together. So that, and that kind of is, should be doable uh, because uh, the only thing is that P PCI EHP has some more mm, things to it, like more you can you can control the uh, signal uh, LED or something like that, blink it or or make it just lead it and so on. So there's, there, there are some additional things you can do with PCI EHP 
you can you have some more control over the device or over the help like stuff but other than that they should really work in the same way i mean if there's a signal to that the device that the that a device has appeared then we should handle it in the same way regardless of the source of that signal and and also for hot remove so that's the problem right now we have those two things they are kind of mutually exclusive although right now we have they are not modules anymore they used to be modules they are not modules anymore they are uh, uh, built in always built into the kernel and I think that PCI e is used by default if the if the BIOS gave us control over the over the extended cap capability structure and uh, uh, yeah, that's that's what happens, and I think we we will need to remove that that uh, restriction. So we we are going to work on that. So that's one topic I have for today, and I wonder if you have some thoughts or questions regarding this. No. Actually, it's the per root part, which may be no even a per house bridge. So this this per house bridge, yeah. Well, I think that should be the same method. I mean, they should just start processing and then go to the core and ask, ask the core to do something. And then the core will, will do the hot add, whatever the source of it is. It's like. Oh yeah, eject eject is a different thing because uh, how how then how to remove yeah. Yeah, so that's one problem. So we can, uh, the, if we have actually signals for the same device from both sources, then we may decide what to do. I mean, we, we have to decide what to do, and those may be different things depending on, on, the, on the source of the signal. But the, the, the specific hot add and hot remove paths, I mean, for devices where you add the device to the to the hierarchy and remove it from the hierarchy should be the same there, there may be differences with uh, things like eject as you said so the eject may be because for for a ACPI eject there is a method in the in the ACPI tables for PCI Express eject there's a different mechanism so so we may have to choose which one to use, which is the whole difficulty in this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a difficulty in that in, in that handling. But in principle we should be able to get to get uh, notifications from both the native and ACPI uh, mechanisms and then handle them in the same way as far as reasonably possible. That's my view on that. So do you think we'll have to have some kind of bit in each bridge saying whether we use data hot plug or PCI hot plug 
No, I don't think so. We should just allow it to use both and then handle that. You know, if we get a signal from there, handle that this way. And if we, if we get a signal from there, handle it this way. But it should end in the same, uh, in the same action being done, actually, as far as the uh, device tree manipulations uh, go, as I think. Because the adject, as I said, for example, a physical adject may be handled differently depending on whether, on what's there. I mean, if we have the adject method, we can use the adject method. If we have PCI Express, then we can use PCI Express. So, power levels, you mean power states? Yeah, there is, but we kind of use both ways at the same time. So we use native and we use ACPI at the same time. And it's done by, first of all, changing the native power state to what is requested and then calling ACPI to do the same. And, uh, but I, it doesn't work with hot plug because if you have removed the device, you, can, you can't remove it again, right? <laughs> so so, so we, need to, we need to just hook it up to the same call path in the core, I think, in both cases. But that's, that's going to be a bit of a cleanup in the PCI HP driver, I think, at, mostly because ACPI PHP has been cleaned up recently due to the Thunderbolt changes, so. Okay, so that's the first topic I had. Oh, I used half of my slot already, huh? <laughs>